Welcome to this service at Faith and Victory Church. This is the place to come to receive your miracle from God. Now, let's join our service already in progress. Praise the Lord. I'm waiting for my glasses to come back so I can see how to read what I have there. <laughs> Praise God. Let's, let's go ahead. Now, this morning we started down one path and got kind of drawn off. And then Joe didn't help me tonight. Joe comes in and says, hey, I saw on a commercial last week, there's a new church in Greensboro that's serving beer at church called the Beer Pew or something like that. Yeah, serving beer at church. I think it's more of a, it might be more of a, let's get together and drink and just call it church and make fun of the church. I don't know. You know, maybe they do preach a sermon. You know, not sure which one they preach. I bet they don't preach Ephesians 5.18. Be not drunk with wine. They said, we're not drinking wine, we're drinking beer. Jesus, help us. We're, we're living in the, era, in the hour of the apostate church. More and more people are falling away from the things of God. They're more interested in, in success according to the world's terms. They're more interested in getting people in and, and uh, bolstering their numbers than they are uh, reaching the world lost for Jesus Christ. But we're, we're going to keep going on and growing in God. We're going to keep doing the right things. Amen. Hallelujah. This morning we read from John, the third chapter, where Jesus told Nicodemus, you must be born again. He said, the man be born again, he not, shall not see the kingdom of heaven. Um, understanding the new birth, because, uh, because we, we have to kind of go back to Genesis, where man fell, the light went out of man, man was separated from God. Remember, uh, in, in, they you eat the fruit thereof, you shall surely die, as the Hebrews actually says, in dying you shall die. Why? Because we, we understand man's a three-part being. Thank you. Man's a three-part being. Man is spirit, man is soul, man is body. Uh, or, or better stated, man is a spirit, man possesses a soul, and he lives in a body. Wow. <laughs> the glory left. <laughs> when I had my, before I got my glasses clean, the glory was here. Oh, no, the glory didn't leave. Thank God that you know, even if you can't see it, his manifest presence is with us. Amen? Amen. Glory to God. In Genesis 1, 26 and 27, God said, let us make man after our image, after our likeness, after our kind. Amen. Let's just look over there. Just, we'll look there. Sometimes we like to not cover things because we kind of think everybody already knows them. And um, true, they've heard it, but you know, it just doesn't hurt to go, you know, to go back and cover this. I'm, I'm bad for that like anybody else. You want to just go ahead and build something else on, on what you believe everybody already has a foundation in. But the problem is, what if somebody doesn't have the foundation or if people have forgotten their foundation? Then we leave them behind and they, they miss something here. God said in Genesis chapter 1, verse 26, he said, let us make man, <coughs> um, let us make, <laughs> i got to turn my page, man and our image after our likeness let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over all the, ca over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. Now, Brother Buddy Harrison used to say, and thank God we've got authority over creeps. <laughs> Amen. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. And God said unto them, man and woman, be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the face of upon the earth. Now here we, well, here we have God's order um, of things. Man and woman are to be joined together and procreate. God, if God just wanted a man just to run around and, and, you know, and just rule, he just made a man. The Bible says, actually, he found no helpmate for him. And he took out of his rib, took out of his side, and made the woman. And the man said, thou art woman, for you're taken from man. Hello. And so God created male and female, man and woman. Hallelujah. And told them, what's the first thing? Be fruitful and multiply. God, now let me say something. The attack on marriage and the attack on family is deliberate because God had a family before he had a church. It is the first institution ordained of God. Why do you think Satan fights it so hard? 
the joining of a man and woman together for, and, and procreating the race of humanity was given, got man and woman were given that responsibility and Satan attacks that because it's the first institution of God. The church came later. The church is made up of family. Right here in the very beginning, God ordained it to be so. Hello? Y'all here, you going home. Okay. So God created man how in his image, after his likeness, and gave him authority. Now we know, according to the third chapter of the book of Genesis, that Satan came and beguiled the woman, and she did uh, eat the fruit, and man gave it to the man with her. He wasn't on the backside of the garden fishing. And uh, he did eat, and then they, they, they died spiritually. Now the, the term dying spiritually does not mean that man ceased to exist. Man, you know, and, and, and I like to say it this way because death biblically doesn't mean to cease to exist. Never does. It, it really refers to separation. See, spiritual death is a separation of the human spirit from God. Physical death is a separation of the, of the human, of, what did I say? Yeah, from God. Spiritual death is a separation of the human spirit from God's spirit. Physical death is a separation of the human spirit from his body. The second death will be the eternal separation of the human spirit from God. So the three types of death talked about in the Bible, spiritual, physical, and the second, are all in reference to separation, not cessation of existence. We think because of, because of, of, of carnal mind and because of being so trained that what we see is reality, what, we, what the physical senses is reality, that when someone dies and we place them in the ground, they have ceased to exist. And that's far from the truth. Their spirit continues to live. Or exist. So, so God's life is not, life doesn't mean existence. Life is what God is. Okay? His existence is life, and it's, it's life in a different sense than, you know, you know, when the human spirit is separated from God, it's spiritually dead, but it's, it still exists. It's just separated from God. Okay? So God is life. In that sense that he, he exists with all the attributes of God. Satan has, not, Satan has none of those attributes. He's spiritually dead. He's spiritually separated from union with the Father. Union with God. But he ceased to he exist. Sinners who died and gone to hell. Still exist. But they exist in the state of spiritual death. Or separation from God. Oh what a dark place to be. The, the, the man was so full of light from the life of God that his whole countenance was covered in the glory in the, in, the, in the beginning of creation. That when he sinned and spiritual death took over and the light of God went out, he knew he was naked. Up until that time, now see you got all these, these bozos going around, around going to have a nudist colony somewhere. We're going to be like Adam and Eve in the garden. No, you're, you're uh-uh. No, you, you, some of them need more leaves. Yeah. Hello? They, um, you know, but they, they were covered in the glory. In, in the same way that the face of Moses was covered in, I mean, Moses was covered in the glory when he came out of the Mount of Transfiguration. His face glowed so bright, they had to put a veil over it. They couldn't look on it. Well, see, man, when he had the life of God in him and, and, and his body was not, mortal but it was new. it actually man was not created with a mortal or immortal body his body was created eternal it did not cease to have eternal existence or life in it until man sinned in dying you shall die dying spiritually your body will die so remember he who takes the, eats the fruit shall surely die but that's not what it says in the hebrew it says in dying you shall die what happened? They died spiritually first. Now, I'm going to tell you something. We know he didn't die physically first because he died, lived another 900 years. I mean, if he was talking about physical death, he would have gone crunch. I mean, actually, he probably wouldn't have done that because Eve would have gone crunch, boom, and Adam said, I ain't doing that. Give me another one. Yeah. Hello? She'd fall over and, and, and cease to exist the minute she crunched. He wouldn't have eaten it. He'd say, hey, look, I got, I got more ribs. I'm uneven anyway. Take the other side. <laughs> All right? No, she died spiritually. The light went out, and then he did the same thing. The light went out, and they knew they were naked. Why? 
because the glory went out. They were, they, they were covered in the glory just like the face of Moses was. And his was just from being in the presence of God like a moon reflecting the glory. Theirs was coming from the inside out. They were light beings. Now, I'm not getting into Star Wars, you know, Yoda, Goobity God. They really were luminous beings. The light of God was in them. They were born of that light. They were created in his image, and God is light. God told Moses, he said, he said you can't look on my face. He had to hide him in the cleft and, and cover him and only see his hind, hind parts. As he walked by, he couldn't even look on his face. Look on, no man seen God's face and live. He couldn't look at his face and live. It had been too much. Jesus in the Mount of Transfiguration, when, when God spoke to him, Moses and Elijah appeared beside him. Peter, James, and John, they woke up, looked at him, and saw them standing there. They were transfigured in the glory. His raiment became glistening from the glory coming out. He, he unveiled the glory for a moment. And so much so that it took his clothes and turned them, uh, you know, Mr. Clean, bright white, bleached white. Just from the glory coming out of him. That's how man was created. But the moment that Adam and Eve sinned, they died spiritually. They were separated from God because of rebellion to, to God and his, his, his word. Then it took 900 years for the sin to kill their body. And then man's lifespan kept getting shorter and shorter and shorter and shorter and shorter. Finally, God had to step in and say, I'll give you 70 or 80 at, min at minimum. Well, wow, the whole human race is going to wipe itself out just because of the, the, the onslaught of sin. See, we kept shortening, kept shortening, kept shortening life, life spans. God had to step in and, and stop that. He wouldn't have a race to save. Three score and ten, you know, by reason of strength, four score. And so man was created in the image of God initially, but fell from that estate. And then that sin was passed on after all mankind after that. I mean, we, we, you think about it, you, you see the, the offspring of Adam and Eve, uh, one committing murder. Just because, it, because you know, God didn't accept his, his, his offerings. Now, that's another, that's another sermon right there. You don't get to do it your way with God, you do it God's way. You don't make deals with God, you do it God's way. God required a blood sacrifice because blood had to cover sin. You just don't come to God and say, well, this is good enough. I want to do this. It's good enough for God. It, it ain't good enough for God. Now, I'm going to tell you, it is God's way or the highway. Amen. And so man was created in the image of God. That image was, was uh, um, snuffed out in the fall. And God had to have a redeemer to come and redeem man back to his estate. It was necessary. Now, we, we go we, thousands of years in between the, promises of, the promise of Genesis 3, 15, um, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9. Sorry. I wasn't counting down to take the blast off of, um, let's go to verse 8. And they, and they heard the voice of God, the Lord God, walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of God, of the Lord God, amongst the trees of the garden. Now think about it. Before they would just go commune with God. Why? They were in harmonious relationship with him. They were in connection with him. They were born of him. His life was the very thing that existed in them. When they took of the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, they spiritually died. And God, and God came down to talk to him. In verse 9, and the Lord called unto Adam and said, Where art thou? He said, I heard thy voice in the garden. I was afraid. And all of a sudden, man, can you see the difference in the creature? Before, he's not afraid. He communes with God. He walks with God. Talks with God. Has fellowship with God. There's no fear in him. As a matter of fact, he, don't, he doesn't even know what fear is. Why? Because fear is perverted faith. Fear is assurance that the words of Satan are real. Are y'all here? You go home. This type of fear. That the words of Satan are real. It is an anti-faith. 
it is to use this term faith in the devil's words. That's what fear is. Fear in the fallen estate. I mean, faith in the fallen estate. So God comes down to walk with him and hides himself. God says, where are you? He said, I heard your voice and I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. And God said, who told you you were naked? How would he know he's naked? There's no way for him to know. <clears throat> because, and you know God does it. He's not walking down here going, oh, when what happened to Adam? But who told you you were naked? Well, have you eaten of the tree whereof I commanded that you should not eat? <laughs> now man has gone from a faith being that communes with God, with, with the intelligence to name all the animals of the world. Walking and communing with God and, you know, with authority to subdue the earth, replenish the earth, have authority over the earth, have authority over creeps. Amen. And what's the first thing he does when he gets encountered with he's in trouble? Uh, the woman you gave me, we're talking about passing the buck. He's going to blame it on the woman and God. It's a co-conspiracy between God and the woman to mess Adam up. The woman whom thou gavest to be with me, she gave me of the tree and I did eat. Pass the buck. And the Lord said unto the woman, what is this that thou hast done? The woman said, not me. The serpent beguiled me and I did eat. Bunch of cowards. No responsibility. Hello? And the Lord said to the serpent, because you've done this, thou art cursed above all cattle and above every beast of the field upon thy belly thou shalt go and thus shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. Now apparently, we've seen old art and history, the serpent could fly. And um, now all of a sudden he's got to crawl on his belly and eat dust. Verse 15. Now, let me say this. He's talking to the serpent, but he's not talking to the snake itself. He's talking to the spirit that was using that serpent, Satan. Are you here? I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise your head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Now, here's the prophecy of the virgin birth, because it's the seed of the woman. Women don't have seed. God's prophesying in Genesis 3.15, the virgin birth, a supernatural birth without, without artificial insemination, without a man. It's going to be a supernatural means where the, where the Holy Ghost overshadowed her. You know, Mary said, how shall this be seeing I know not a man? He said, the Holy, Holy Spirit or Holy Ghost shall overshadow thee, and therefore that thing that's born of thee should be called the Son of God. Amen. And that seed's going to bruise your head. Now, that's an old, remember the Bible's not an Eastern, a Western book, it's an Eastern book. Oriental. Now, the, 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 what's what they call the area around Israel? The Middle East. But it's, a, it's an Oriental or Eastern mindset. Okay? This phraseology here, shall bruise your heel, and then shall bruise, his, shall bruise your head, literally means the, the bruise your head, uh, like Jerry Savelle used to say, uh, like Texas, we say, going to bust your head. But it literally means break your authority. The, serp the, the serpent's going to have his authority broken by the supernatural birth of the seed of the woman. Now, that's kind of bad when you get, you know, listen, the devil knows God gets what he says. He watched him do it. He watched, he, he found out that words have so much authority and so much power that he said in one place, I will send my throne into the heavens. I'll be as the most high. And God said, I'll cast you as profane out of my presence. And Jesus recorded that and said this, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. The great dragon. He came down having much wrath. Because why? He tried to overthrow heaven and it didn't work. Even had a third of the angels get in on the deal. Hello. And Satan comes in and starts using confession. See, confession from the, the wrong source will not overthrow God's authority. 
and speaking things contrary to wholesome doctrine does not overthrow God's authority. And saying you don't think the Bible's relevant anymore and that, you know, uh, how people feel and the emotions of man are more important uh, doesn't overthrow God's authority. God's word is forever settled in heaven. Amen. God doesn't change his mind. Amen. He didn't stop. He, he didn't, when we read the law of God in the, in the Old Testament, that shows us God's moral code. That's how man, let me say this, before the fall of man, man could live that way in, all the time. There are, there are things that man, men dream up now that, that were never dreamed up before. An evil bind creates evil. Perverseness. Hello. Wasn't it wasn't how God intended it? It wasn't how God wanted it? God, and only a perverse mind could dream it up. Are you here? It wasn't until the fall of man we had some of the perversion that we have in the earth. It wasn't there before. God created man and a woman. If you look through the Bible, they're always taking a wife. Hello? And if they took a husband and they were a man, they didn't live long. God didn't put up with it. Are you here? Have you gone home? And so the woman, you know, she, she, she kicks it over to the devil, and then God says, because you've done this, now I'm going to put enmity between you and the seed, you and the woman's seed. He's going, you're going to bruise his heel, but he's going to bust your head. He's going to take your authority. Meaning what? Adam had authority. God gave him authority to replenish and subdue and have dominion over all the earth. As a matter of fact, when we study it out a little bit, and I'm going to make this statement, I'm not going to have to take time to, to bear it out for you today, but, you know, just if you, if you could do a good, a decent Bible study, you can figure this out. If not, we'll, we'll get to it at some point in time. Man's authority apparently went all the way up to the mercy seat of God. Man's authority went into heaven up to, but not including, God's own throne. How do you know? Because when God told Moses to make the tabernacle and to build it according to the pattern he saw in heaven. The blood for forgiveness and covering went up to the mercy seat, but not on God's throne. Meaning that's how far man's sin went. And we know in part, because in Job, it tells us there was a day when the sons of God came before God and they're talking about Satan and, 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 um, you know, and Satan and all the people, well, all the authority Satan had gained. He could come up and accuse the brother right in front of God's throne. And he couldn't step on God's throne. Why? Because Adam had given him that authority to go there. He committed high treason. And so the devil had the place where Adam had. He took his authority. He could go out there. He could accuse the people right before God's throne. And when Jesus came, he entered into the holy of alls. And just like the high priest, where they operate according to the pattern that Moses saw in heaven, and would enter into the holy of holies once every year, not, not just with the sins of people for his own sins, and put it on the mercy seat of God to cleanse it. Jesus took his own blood for the very mercy seat of God in that throne of room of heaven and cleansed heaven of the taint of sin by his own blood. Glory to God. Amen. I said amen. And so Satan had gotten man's authority, and because of the way man did it, now remember, God gave man, Adam, the authority. Be fruitful, multiply, replenish the earth, subdue it, have dominion over it. That has a legal contract, spiritually speaking. Now, I have the right. Now, <clears throat> let me put a stipulation here. I can't lease this building out for more than what they're leasing it to me for. But I've got the legal right. If I want to sublet this to another church, I can. I can write a contract up and say, we're going to lease this to you. And this is just as binding to that, the, the, the owner as if he had written the contract with them. Why? Because he, I had the authority of this space. I had the right to this space. And as long as I used it within the parameter, it was, the parameters that were set forth, I can do with it what I want to. Adam was given authority by legal contract. 
Now, the, you know, if, you, if I have a building and I lease a building from a big guy and I go in there and I sublet apartments in it or whatever, the owner of the building can't come in. Now, you can't do that. I don't like the people in there. Wait a second. You, let, you leased the building to me. You made no stipulation that I couldn't do that. Therefore, I can do with it as I please until my lease runs out. Now, at that point in time, you might be able to throw the people out, but you can't do it before then because I'm in charge with the authority of this building. Adam did the same thing with man's authority on the earth. Satan came in. He turned it over to him by submitting himself to his, his word and his authority. So Satan took man's authority and began to run roughshod over all the earth. Suddenly, everything about the earth becomes perverted. Faith becomes fear. Uh, physical health becomes diseased. The mind becomes corrupt. Remember the Tower of Babel? Now, we've used that in the past to talk about uh, uh, um, the authority of unity. God said, let us go down and see what man is doing. And I believe it says something like this. There'll nothing be withheld from them that they imagined. The group of humanity all spoke the same language. They were with one purpose. They had become perverted in thought. And they were trying to do what Satan tried to do. They were trying to build a tower to heaven. And God came down and confounded them and confused their languages to break up the unity. So they couldn't do it. He didn't, he didn't stop them from doing it. He just, he just confused them. So they, couldn't be, so they couldn't speak the same languages. Why? Because nothing would be withheld from them that they imagined. In the imagination, the man became perverse and more and more dis, uh, distanced. I mean, have, how many of you looked at any of the, the uh, comment now, comments now on Internet things where there's a Christian thing or something to do with godly people and how venomous and evil and, I mean, just disdaining anything of God people are. People say things today, I think, my goodness, I wouldn't have said that. When 30 years ago, people wouldn't even have said it because they thought they were going to die if they did. Yeah. Now they just, they just blast it. There's no God. Your God's this. I mean, I, I serve a dog. Or, you know, how many of you have ever seen God, dog is life? I feel like being a lieutenant commander wharf at that time. Ramming speed. Boom. <laughs> just want to ram them. You know what I'm saying? You know? Dog is good. There's, I mean, that's, that's just, you know, the, the little fish sound, the, 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 the feet on it and stuff, Darwin and that kind of thing, just mocking Christianity. That mind is a perverted, perverse, thought-processed mind that's been overtaken by Satan and, 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 our, and our educational system doesn't help. Um, and just, just feeding it and feeding it and feeding it, you know, in rebellion towards God and, and, and enmity against God and hating God and, and just, you know, and, and, and Why? Because, <clears throat> because Satan's controlling their, their processes. He's the God of this world, and whom the God of this world has blinded the minds of them, lest they should see the light of the glorious gospel and believe. So man was brought into a state of separation from God, and in that state of separation, the, his master, now Jesus said, remember the Pharisees were, you know, talking, said, we have Abraham to our father, and Jesus said, no, you got your father, you are your father the devil. Go to John 8, 44. Ye are of your father, the devil, and what? The lust. Are we looking that up? All right, I'm going to. Huh? All right. You are of your father, the devil, and the lust of your father you will do. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth because there's no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own for he is a liar and the father of it. Notice that second part. You're of your father the devil and the lust of your father you will do. Unregenerated mankind is carrying out the lust of Satan. Satan hates God's creation. Now, I'm, I'm going to step back into some deep stuff here, right here. Get myself in trouble. There is hints of, and, and I can't prove it full out in the Bible, but I, I, there's enough hints in it to me to, to take this position. I believe this. 
when we look at the account of Genesis, we found something very interesting. In the, God, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, and the earth was void and without form. Now, the word, I believe, void there is in the Hebrew, tohu, T-O-H-U. Now, that, understand that is a transliteration of the Hebrew lettering, okay? We took an equivalent English letter to the Hebrew letter so we could pronounce it just for reference sake. But it's, it's tohu. Yet over in the, uh, the prophecies, and I, I think it's Ezekiel, it might be Jeremiah, could be Isaiah. I don't remember. But it says this, God says, I am the Lord and I create nothing. Tohu. Now how could he create the heaven and the earth and it be void and without form? And he comes over here and says, I don't create anything that way. Now, there are... Now, you get a lot of argument from people, and, I, and again, I'm not saying this is doctrine. You've got to believe to go to heaven. But there's a lot of people from, from historical studies who believe that, that the word where it says, in the, God, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, and the earth was, that the word was was really, in the Hebrew, became void and without form. We find that Lucifer, the bright and morning star, when you study him in Ezekiel, walked on the circumference of the earth, and he was covered in all kinds of jewelry, Je not jewelry, but jewels, diamonds, topazes, so forth. And he, because he had not fallen, Lucifer did not become an evil word until after the fall. And as a matter of fact, he's really not even referred to as Lucifer after he's referred to as Beelzebub, the fly king, god of the maggots. I love that. Beelzebub means, actually does mean lord of the flies. So he's the maggot king. Come on, guys, that's a really good place to laugh. I don't want to laugh at the devil. <laughs> you better. He walked as the under ruler of God on the earth. That's why he said, I will send my throne into the heavens and be as the most high. The Bible says this, he was perfect until the day that iniquity was found in him. Pride entered in. Now, we, we do believe, I can't prove it thoroughly from the scriptures, but I, I believe, that there was a race of man before Adam. And that race was wiped out in the, in, in the first flood, and the first flood is the flood between Genesis 1-1 and Genesis 1-2. That's why after the second flood, Noah's flood, God said, I won't do that again. Okay? We believe it. Why? Because demon spirits are not fallen angels. How do you know that? Because, because um, Peter, James, Peter says that the angels are reserved in chains. The, fall, the angels that they left their first estate are reserved in chains. Well, where, so everybody, a lot of people should say, well, well, you know, demon spirits are, I mean, are, are really just the fallen angels. I believe they were a race of man and in, 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 in flesh and blood body, a race of men that existed before Adam that were wiped out in, in the pre-Adam flood. That's why they want to be in bodies. That's why they want to be in some kind of flesh body so they can function. Their desire is to get back to be able to function on this earthly realm again. They want to possess people. They, they'll possess pigs just so they can function here. Okay? Now, this... Honestly, the people who are always you know, going around you know, arguing that, you know, about science, you know, there's this kind of man, that kind of man. You know, there's, not a missing, there's not a missing link between the pre-Adam race and the, and, the, and the race of Adam. You're going to find humanoid-type skeletons on the earth because there was a race of men before Adam. God wiped the whole thing out. Satan came as lightning from heaven, fell to the earth, and the entire earth became voided without form. And then God separated. It began to, what we call the, the that seven days of creation. God, to me, now this is, this, is, this is not doctrine, okay? If you don't believe this, you're not going to hell. And if I do believe this, I'm not going to hell. But I believe it answers a lot of questions. God separated the waters again. What, what do you think the stories like Atlantis came from? Things... Just to, you know, people just don't make stuff up. Things happen, you know? And so the, the lamb was called back out. God sent forth man. He said, have, 
Let me ask you a question. How can you replenish something that was never plenished? Replenish the earth. If, if no race had ever existed, when God created man, male and female, he created them and said, be fruitful and multiply and replenish, he was to be fruitful and multiply and populate this planet. But he used the word replenish. Because there had been a race there before. Now those races, when they, when they were killed, became the demon spirit. Satan is still their head. So they, fought, they, fought, they were following after Satan to overthrow God. They're going to have their own deal going on. Satan had convinced them that he was the bright morning star. He was it. He was cool. I mean, look at me. I got all these jewels and light shines out from me. You idiot. You left your first estate and messed the whole thing up. Now they try to possess anything they can possess. Now, I know that's, this gets really heavy. And probably more than a Sunday night service should be, well, maybe not. Maybe it's probably not really good for a Sunday morning service. All right. Because people need time to go chew on this one. So God gave man authority. Oh, and don't you, you don't think if he said subdue the earth, what was there to subdue if it was perfect creation? No, it was already, it's already we got, we've got Satan here. He's got, a, he's got a spiritual race of now who are now principalities, powers. Notice that spirits like to be in certain places. Why? Because that's where they existed before. Remember when the angel was sent from heaven? And after th Daniel's fast, after three weeks, he finally got here. He said, and he said, the, the prince of Persia, I believe it's the prince of Persia, withstood me. Why is he trying to rule over that area? Because that's where he had before. Yeah. Man was given the authority to subdue it and take dominion over all of that. See, God, originally, God had created the planet to have a man rule and reign as his under ruler, to imitate him and to rule like he rules. That was his design. That was his plan. Amen. The spirit, remember that? The, the demon spirits and the pig says, have you come to torment us before the time? Well, there's, there's a hint there that Adam's authority had a time limit on it. So God gave himself an out. It's just like writing a contract. All right, I'm leasing this to you for five years. Now, in the five years, I can either resign that lease with you or I can, I can tell you it's time for you to get out. That's just the way it is. I may have leased it out to a, uh, another company. And then when that five years runs up, that guy comes and says, get out. It's my building. The lease is over. Now, we got a lease with Ed. No, nope. Ed's lease ended with me yesterday. You're out. God gave himself an out. And so when you know, man's lease runs out, then Jesus is coming back to sit on his throne. And he'll rule and reign. Amen. And if you rebel against him, that you're going to end up in the second, second death. So man was created with the image of God to, to rule and reign. Hallelujah. Y'all hear you going home? Man, but man's perversion, you know, Satan came and he was, more, he was more subtle than any beast of the field. Beguiled Eve. See, you don't converse with the devil. You take authority over the devil. You don't have conversations with him. You don't go up to people and have conversations and ask them who they've been in. Now, here's the number, you know, because every dad was going to want to tell you he was in Hitler or Mussolini. I remember a number of years ago, we were some guy, they had, we had a Christian coffee house. Oh, that used to be the big thing. The Christian coffee house. All the Christians would go down there, somebody play the guitar, sing some folky Keith Green style music. Okay, Christian music. And everybody talk about it. And he always had somebody there that, that was, you know, trying to cast the devil out of folk. And one guy, he said, I was casting the devil out of this guy. He had been in Hitler and Mussolini. And I mean, he just went stalling. He went down the whole gamut. That was a busy devil. Hello? Jesus only asked one time, yeah. who are you? Why? Because he, by the, you remember he laid aside his rights of deity and the glory. Uh, I didn't know we were going to get into demonology tonight, but that's all right. Yeah. This helps us understand that why we have to be born again. Because when man fell, he became subordinate to Satan's authority. 
God just couldn't remove Satan's authority off of man because man had that authority and gave it to the devil. And the reason people go to hell is because they reject the redemption plan of God where they renounce that lordship and accept the lordship of Jesus. And so they suffer the penalty of who they're associated with. Man's estate was not hell. Man goes to hell because he's connected to Satan. Satan wants to tell you you can do anything you want to do and get away with it. It doesn't matter. God loves you. Why? Because he wants to take you to hell. Are you here? Satan has pastors saying things from the pulpit that will keep you in sin because Satan wants to take you to hell. And he'll send droves into their churches to fill up their pews and to put money in there so they can be successful so he can take them to hell. Because you must be born again. You must come out of Satan's kingdom and come into God's kingdom. Where he raised us up together, made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ. Amen. We were translated out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his dear son. Satan's goal is to take people to hell. He knows what his final estate is. And the only pleasure he can have is taking many, as many of God's creation with him as he can. He wants people in hell just so he can mock God in his torment. I got all these people in hell. Oh, I know. Oh, I'm suffering, but yeah, I got all these people in hell. So I hope you suffer. With the knowledge I got people in hell. Satan hates God. Hates anything of God. Have you noticed, now that supposedly we're supposed to be excessively um, accepting and tolerant of homosexuals, how much, if you come up and say that that's a wrong lifestyle, how much venom suddenly comes out? Yeah. Yeah. Not one ounce of acceptance, not one ounce of anything, just venom. Why? Because they're of their father, the devil. God, but God, Satan wants to use people to take other people to hell. And I'm going to pick up next week and get more into the new birth. <laughs> because it's already quarter of eight. My goodness. Y'all enjoying that? Man's authority was given to the devil. Man became subordinate to the devil. Therefore, man must be redeemed in order to, you know, God has to find a way to redeem man out of Satan's authority. And he did that by slaying the Lamb of God from the foundation of the world. Amen. And whoever believe, whosoever believeth on him. For God so loved the world that he told everybody they're going to heaven. That's not what it says, is it? Jesus, the head of the church, said, who so, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth on him should not perish but have everlasting life. Now we get more, more, more doctrinal clarity on that through Paul's writings to the church. That if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart God's raised you from the dead, you'll be saved. Peter preached on the day of Pentecost, Acts 2.38, repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of the Lord Jesus and you'll be saved. I mean, you'll receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Amen. And so we, we find out with clarity, God instituted a plan, but it still had to be the same way Adam chose to rebel against God and become subordinate to the devil and Satan become his spiritual father. Now, some of you may not have heard this term. Adam was the first man to be born again. He was born from life, God's authority, to death, Satan's authority. Jesus is referred to as the first one born from the dead. Yeah. There's another place, and it's another scripture about Jesus uh, being spiritually dead and, and being in hell and being in torment. Remember, he's called the only begotten son of God. Later, he's called the firstborn of many brethren, but he's also referred to as the firstborn from the dead. Can't be talking about physical death because we have people all through the Bible before Jesus ever showed up that were raised from the dead. Yeah. Lazarus was raised from the dead. I mean, the prophet had his people raised from the dead. The guy was thrown down into Elisha's tomb got raised from the dead. I mean, all kinds of people got raised from the dead all through the Bible. So when he says that Jesus is the firstborn from the dead, it cannot mean they were physically dead and got raised from the dead because we got all kinds of scriptures in the ministry of Jesus that people got raised from the dead. 
He sent his whole team out and said, go, go preach the gospel to them, you know, heal the sick, cast out devils, raise the dead. Somebody talk to me out there. Then he's called the firstborn from the dead. Not only is he the firstborn of many brethren, he's the firstborn from the dead. And we'll get into that next week. Hallelujah, I wasn't planning on getting that deep into this, but it was good anyhow. We trust that you were blessed by the Word of God and the flow of the Spirit of God in this service. If you would like to contact us, please write us via email at office at fbc.org or using our mailing address, PO Box 7752, Greensboro, North Carolina, 27417. If you would like to contribute to our ministry, please go to our website at www.fbc.org and click on the Giving Online button. Thank you, and may God richly bless you for your giving.